Hi, I'm Tom Ackerman, and I'm uh, here to say a few words on behalf of a magazine that I've read for many, many years, Student Filmmakers, which I have always found to be a reliable source of information and advice for those who are setting out, perhaps for the first time, to make their first motion picture. So um, let's get on with it. When first-time filmmakers are setting out to script their first project, their heads are no doubt swimming with a lot of stuff, and they're essentially they may be on uncomfortable ground. I mean, we we don't nobody hatches out of an egg knowing how to craft uh, a motion picture, and I I I think that those individuals have to take a deep breath and not load themselves down with every last little detail, which frankly, if they're not an experienced filmmaker, it would be hard to even know where to begin to answer the, or to ask that first question that they might have. I think most of all, I, I urge them to have confidence in the idea that they have uh, created and to not dilute that idea simply because there may be some technical obstructions or I, I should say uh, challenges that are totally new to them. This is all new to them. So I think it's best to take a deep breath and not um, burden yourself with all the potential uh, pitfalls of making that film. At state of the idea, don't abandon your idea because you're envisioning uh, X, Y, or Z obstacles in the future in the production of it. For those students who are making their first film and have made the choice to work with a professional director of photography, number one, um, have they seen her work? And if so, does do those films point to qualities that they want to have in their own film? So that's first, know the DP's body of work. Secondly, try to lean on them and their experience. I find that first-time directors, which I rarely, have I ever worked with a first-time director? Well, not, not too often. Uh, but I, I do know students, and I've taught plenty of them. And I think there's kind of an intimidation factor that goes along with hiring a director of photography. But I think that it's terribly important to realize that in that director DP relationship, it's, it's a give and take. But I think you have to be willing to give a little bit more the first time around, simply because you, you, you're not going to know the whole process in any kind of detail. Now, the third thing I would suggest is once you have linked up with someone, understand that for them to do their work, they have to know what's in your mind and, and frankly, what's in your heart and soul. The film is very important to you, obviously. And so try to share that with them even if it means uh, getting onto some uncomfortable ground now and then. They, they need to know what compelled you to want to make this motion picture. And that way, they can do their best work for you. On 
on my list of don't, it would be headed by this admonition to not be intimidated by the process. Accept the fact that as a first time filmmaker, you're not gonna have all the answers. And a second point I would make is though you may not be skilled in the use of cinematography to tell your story, you have hired a professional to do that job. So presumably this frees you up of the concern. So the second point I would make is uh, don't try to have all the answers all the time because you won't have them. But this individual may and probably will if you've done your homework. The third thing that I would say is for the first time director to enjoy the process. You've hired a professional, so that individual is going to spare you from a number of pitfalls. And to take advantage of that uh, guardianship, if you will, is not uh, an admission of any kind of incompetence on your part. It's simply following the, the actual relationships that happen in the motion picture business. Uh, if, if, if I'm working with a director, I feel an obligation to deliver her idea or his idea to the screen. But in order to do that, they have to be clear about what that idea is. I see it as a partnership. And both individuals, the director and the director of photography, really need to commit to that 100%. Probably the most important aspect of forging that new relationship between a first time director and an experienced director of photography is to have a good understanding and to practice blocking the actors very carefully. Now, when I say very carefully, I say know the scene know the structure of it, what's important, how A, B, and C all eventually go together in terms of the dialogue, but then to lean on that director of photography, draw on their experience, because they've helped more than one director do the work necessary to get the actors in the right spot at the right time. Now, that being said, uh, being open to their needs, to the DP's needs, is uh, paramount in this process. You, as director, may have visited the locations not once, but many times, and let's say it's in a big library, uh, and uh, you've always fancied the idea that the two characters in your scene are going to be sitting in those chairs over there in the corner. Beautiful chairs, lovely corner, art on the walls. You know, it, it's the very uh, embodiment of what we think a, a library ought to be visually. But at the other end of the room, in an equally lovely place, though perhaps different, there's a large window with natural light streaming in, let's say, to further embroider, uh, it's, it's a north window. So that light comes in almost constantly through the day, through all the hours of the clock, is soft light, north light. For a cinematographer, that would be a golden opportunity. If you agree with your DP to shoot 
in the soft light of that huge window at the other end of the room, even though it wasn't on your plan, you will both benefit. Actors are going to look great. It'll be lovely chiaroscuro, light to dark shading. And although blocking is very important, uh, they, they can't overshoot marks. They can't be cavalier about, about hitting the places where they look best, where the performance is going to look the best. But um, it isn't it isn't the kind of precision that you might face in a dark corner of the room that was your first choice, which would have to be meticulously lit in order for the scene to work. Shooting on a set or on a soundstage gives enormous control to the cinematographer in terms of the look of the image, the kinds of shots that can be achieved. And yet, in order to make the movie work, he or she has to make sure that those visual concepts are reflecting the mood of the scene as the director sees it and and to realize that your photography is not just to select frames and hang them in a a gallery but it's it's telling the director's story now any experienced dp that's intuitive they know that. But a first time director may need to assert themselves in that department. And to do that, they, you know, if you've hired a professional, you don't want to necessarily insult their intelligence by telling them stuff they don't need to know. Many of you may be coming from very different places as you begin your journey in film. And rather than seeing that as a detriment or as a handicap, I prefer to look at it as an opportunity. And with all due respect, if you don't know anything, then you can know a lot more. And the opportunities for learning uh, as you travel through the world and through the space of filmmaking, the opportunities are going to be vast. So I guess my main point would be, don't ignore those opportunities, be open to them. Learn what you can, whenever you can. I can remember doing my first work long, long ago, I studied at the University of Iowa, which was a wonderful school, but the, the study of filmmaking and, and cinematography really wasn't something that was very well, very highly developed at that point. Um, nevertheless, it was a great art school, great medical school. Uh, and let's not forget Paul Engel's Writer's Workshop, which has turned out over the years some of the pr most prominent uh, and wonderful novelists in uh, English language uh, literature. Um, so I, I had a, I had a, a very exciting cultural milieu surrounding me. And I, I like to think that that uh, influenced me. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to look at some of my student films again for the first time in decades. <laughs> I'm prepared to be uh, embarrassed, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But the point is, I was kind of 
blindly following the notion of becoming a cinematographer or a filmmaker. And I was uh, not necessarily aware of where that would lead. I think probably on graduation, I would have been very glad to get a job at the local TV station in Cedar Rapids shooting news film um, or the, the six o'clock news. But um, instead, I was in Air Force ROTC, which meant that I would get a commission as a second lieutenant when I graduated. And the good news there was I was assigned to motion picture production in the Air Force which apart from having to go to Vietnam a couple of times, uh, was uh, was a, a godsend. It really pointed, pointed me in the right direction. But throughout all this, uh, and I, I've just, you know, encapsulated a few years, uh, through this journey, I, I guess I always had more questions than answers. And I'm not being the least bit disingenuous when I say that that feeling of not having all the right answers has lingered with me. And I, I consider it to be um, very helpful because it means that you're going to be observing and thinking and sensitive to the fact that there are other opinions, there are going to be practical issues that you confront in the course of production. Uh, obviously, always trying to remain intuitive, always keeping a good open relationship with your director and all your key colleagues, production designer, costumer, the whole lot. But keep growing. When you move forward, do it with an open mind. And realize that sometimes your best technique is to ask the right question.